And we are live on All In On High School Sports. I'm sorry, Becked In On High School Sports, because <laughs> that's what this show has become. But uh, no, we're live on All In On High School Sports. Jennifer Valenti. Good evening. Kurt Valenti. Uh, by the way, that is a sick polo shirt you are roll know, rocking my, right I now. I wish my uh, computer You have the stand. You might have the stand to I'll show Coach like Breslin. Up. There's the, the K&K embroidery on the polo. Oh, what a shirt. Yeah. What a shirt. I'm pumped to wear that to work. <laughs> but um, how are you tonight? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, before we get to anything on the show, I want to do a, a special, special shout out. It's our uh, great friend, uh, Mr. Mike Briggs' birthday today. So, um, you know, we'll do something a little special for him tomorrow on our K&K. But uh, Briggsy, happy birthday. And um, we know he's celebrating in uh, grand style up there. Absolutely. So uh, absolutely, first thing, for most important, Briggsy's birthday. We'll get into that uh, a little more tomorrow night. But happy birthday, Briggsy. Um, we got NBA playoffs coming on. I am pumped up. Nobody bothered me on Sunday when my New York Knicks are on, but I'll get into that a little more. But uh, we're going to talk high school tonight. Uh, what do we have on the agenda? We have a jam-packed agenda this evening. We welcome back Becton uh, football. Coach Marr and two of assistant coaches, Thomas McGuire and Jay Longo, will be joining him. They had their ring ceremony this past weekend, so they'll recap that a little bit and share the new hardware with us as well. Uh, we will be joined by senior lacrosse player um, Jenna Kleisler from Brick Township High School. And then we'll end the show. We'll have a bookends with Becton. We'll end the show with book, uh, Becton softball. Uh, Coach Joe Kafar will be joined by... By three of his players, Carly Pullman, Nicole Hankey, and Kayla O'Brien. So looking forward to hearing about their successful start to the season. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me. I'm gonna get the you talk. Cause go ahead. Something. I'm gonna get the comments in because we okay. have a bunch of comments coming. I just, in, so I wanted to. Um, you know, we're a high school sports show, and I wanted to pay tribute to uh, one of my high school coaches who uh, passed away this uh, past weekend. So, um, you know. It was somebody, Coach Mary Beth Driscoll, who introduced the sport of lacrosse to me when I was a freshman in high school. Um, it had a, a large impact on me playing and, you know, growing my love of the sport. She's responsible for growing the game in New Jersey as a as a player, as a coach, and as an official. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, you know, pay tribute to her for all she did for the sport, for me, um, you know, and just wanted to recognize her for that. Absolutely. Very nice. A um, couple comments coming in. Coach Breslin, what's up, Jenny and Kurt? Looking forward to another great show. Mr. Kirkpatrick, co-host of the K&K. Good evening, all. Welcome to another episode of the best high school sports talk on earth, all in on high school sports. Um, Coach Sis is saying, what's up? Hello, Coach Sis. Coach Farina, what's up, guys? How are you, Coach Farina? Hello, Coach. There he is, Mr. Neely. Wouldn't it be a great time to discuss the, ba the best baseball Best baseball tournament in the state of New Jersey, a.k.a. the Bergen <laughs> County Baseball Tournament, asking for a friend. Hey, you're our baseball guru. Come on next come week. Come on next week. Yeah. And I want, listen. We'll do a segment. We'll do a segment for you. You have the whole thing, the baseball. The whole yours. floor is yours. <laughs> you can comment in. If you want to have some comments tonight and give us some updates, Mr. Neely, you're always more than welcome. Mr. Neely, Smoky Beards, check them out. Lots of good uh you know, seasonings and rubs for your cooking. Go ahead. It's got an uh, Etsy shop. Coach, this is saying, may she rest in peace. Your oh, soft, your, you. uh, your coach, uh, coach Breslin saying he cannot wait to roast McGuire and Longo. <laughs> and yes. Mr. Neely saying, I am, I don't know if he means I'm in or he doesn't want to finish it. Um, Oh, Carl Ross, cut our football <laughs> segment short and give our ladies their well-deserved extra time. Uh, Neely said he'll make it happen, awesome. so that's good. That's exciting. Good stuff. We're look, looking forward to it. Well, you know what? We have our um, we have our Becton friends in the waiting room, so why don't we, uh, our, our football friends, should we let them in? Absolutely. Get Let's get All going. Right. Let's get going. Hello, coaches. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Thanks Welcome for having back. us again. No problem. Thank you for joining us. Let me just reintroduce you to, um, I think this, this is your third appearance, right? 
It might be Coach more. I, it might be more. <laughs> That's yeah, the, uh, I think I, it's three. Three, three and a half is down for three. So. There you go. <laughs> well, welcome third. back. And uh, we have joining us, as I said, Coach Jack Marr of Becton High School Football. He's joined by um, his one assistant, Coach Jay Longo, as well. And I don't see uh, – I just want to check on Coach McGuire. Uh, you know what? His camera is off. I'm not sure if he is there. It, it's uh, – if he wants to get his his camera on, we usually have to check on Coach McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> we got a comment coming in from Twitter from a Janie Feinberg saying Wildcats. So nice. Well, let um, me let me just recap Becton High School football season. They are coming off of a historical 2020 campaign, undefeated at six and zero, capturing the NJIC championship, a season where they outscored their opponents 190 to 12. So, um, again, congrats on a great season. They're here to kind of recap the ring ceremony that they just had this past weekend. Yeah, guys, thank you again for uh, coming on. And, of course, uh, congratulations on an unbelievable season. If you guys can just both uh, go over real quick, if you guys could just set the scene a little bit of what um, Saturday was like for you guys. Um, it was it was a very nice ceremony. We um, So what we normally do is we normally have a dinner Normally towards the uh, the end, the middle of, or end of January at the fiesta, we um, you know we, we give out individual awards and talk about the, the seniors as a whole. Um, but we, we kind of decided, well, obviously decided had to switch it up a little bit this year because you know nothing could be inside. So um, my touch my uh, sideline club people, uh, Melissa Dunn and Joe Crafasi, who are an absolute pleasure to work with, uh, planned out everything that we had to do for this past Saturday. And uh, we actually went away with the individual awards because it was just a, such a great team effort from top to bottom that, you know, there's, they, uh, we could we have done it probably, but there been fights about who was, you know, the best player in the program and who was the best offensive and defensive player. So we just decided to scrap that. And, um, you know, just, we just had a very enjoyable day. It was a little bit of a, a rain to forecast a couple of days before. So uh, I think uh, Coach Longo did his little rain dance and uh, <laughs> went away. And uh, it wound up being a very nice day. Uh, a couple comments. Coach Breslin's busting some chops saying, oh, boy, McGuire can't get the technology to work. Tell him to call Tim. Uh, LOL. I got it up. I got it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Melissa Dunn that you mentioned is saying Becton football in the house. Um, Anna, I don't want to say the name wrong, Goyas maybe saying Thomas. Uh, Kenny Kirkpatrick for Becton's fourth appearance. Kurt, I think the coaches need to perform the closing song from the movie Wildcats. So he's getting in. Uh, and is also saying congratulations, guys. So proud of you all. Nice. So nice. Awesome. Thank uh, you. Uh, Coach McGuire, you Coach much. Longo, anything you guys want to, you know, just about the scene, uh, about something you're going to remember from uh, Saturday. Uh, I think it's probably easier to say, you know, list things I'm not going to remember because everything – about the entire season, about, you know, Saturday, the ring ceremony, really just from start to finish from, you know, the early weight room sessions in, in March, not knowing what was going to happen with the season, having that cut short, not even knowing if we we're going to have a season. Um, and then really to see what we went through as a team, as coaches, as players, to get to where we were and, and to have that day was really, really special. And then obviously something we're never going to forget. And Coach Longo, before uh, you answer that, um, uh, Coach Freen is saying he wants you to plug uh, Nona Rosa. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was hoping you were going to ask me a pizza question later. <laughs> I'm, I'm prepared already. We so. are so predictable. Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> we watched your show, I guess, a couple of times. That's it. <laughs> once, once or twice. <laughs> so, what do you think, Coach Longo? What's your, what you know? Something again, like uh, like the other coaches are saying, something you'll remember. Or I know you're going to probably answer everything too. McGuire. I'm sorry, Coach McGuire. Sorry, I'm on the wrong thing here. <laughs> Um, it, it was just, it's, you know, like, like coach Longo said, it's, um, we're an extremely close knit group of players and coaches. So, um, just seeing all the, uh, the hard work, um, that we did this year and watching it all pay off at the end by, you know, getting these rings and, and, you know, the shirts and whatnot, it was, uh, it, it was really, really special. Um, it was it was it was very nice. I mean, between between the ring ceremony and you know and the parade after conference championship, it's uh it's it's been a whirlwind, uh, and it's been uh it's been an extremely special year. That's great, 
The uh, speaking of the rings, um, do you guys have them? Can we see them? Want to show them? Show them off to us? Yeah, nice. I, I got mine. Uh, first of all, the uh, the ring people at Johnson's, uh, Anthony Malfato. I think this is his name. Uh, awesome, easy to work with, very very communicative, and, and just very nice. And oh, look at those! Those are awesome. Pretty sweet. I actually pretty. lost mine. <laughs> 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 there it is. Oh my god. So, uh, on the uh, on the inside we had um two sayings, two engravings that everybody got and then uh, a third one that was personal for everybody. Um and just to talk about the two uh uh general ones. The first one was 100 years of tradition because this was our 100th year of uh back in the last year so for football which and and you know to cap that off with the season that we had uh was, was pretty cool. So we we thought that deserved to be on the inside of the ring. And the second one was three letters, and I told this uh, kind of ruined the spot a little bit when I was getting about the rings on Saturday. Uh, but the three letters were DYJ, and uh, DYJ has been our model for the past couple of years. It just stands for do your job, and um, when everybody does their job, um, you know, it, see on the football field it, it, it translated to a, a championship. But um, you know, I hope these kids carry it on to to real life because that's really what it's about. If you do your job, take care of your family and your friends, and everything will be all right. Uh, comment from Tracy Capaluti Cat saying these Blue Devils love those Wildcats. <laughs> so, um, I guess my question, and I mean, some of you guys already oh, kind shit. of answered it, but you know, when we say like the importance of the rings, uh, not just this season. I mean, it's got to be you know all the work you guys have put in with all your seasons. That I mean, probably not even just at Beckton, anywhere else you guys coached, whether it was rec league or anything like that. So if you guys could just talk a little bit about for yourself personally, and then as a program and for the players, the importance of those rings, what, what they really uh, mean going forward for you. Yeah. Jack. Go ahead. Well, this group um, of juniors and seniors, this particular season, uh, it's not the first run with them. I coached them when they were 10 and 11 in the junior program. Uh, we won the Super Bowl then. It was my first and only Super Bowl in the rec program for the Wildcats. Uh, so even before this season started, these kids had a, a special place in, in my heart for what they did uh, then for me. And now to be able to finish off with this group here, uh, it's pretty amazing. And just to speak to the group quickly, uh, I always say this about when people ask, you know, well, what do they like as a team or what would they, you know, how were they to work with? Um if I had asked them when they were 10 and 11, you know, guys, we're going to have practice on Route 17 today. That's where our practice is going to be. They would have asked, all right, coach, north or south, which way do you want to go? <laughs> That's really the type of kids these are. And, and that nothing changed, obviously, as they have gotten older and are now juniors and seniors in high school. And not downplaying the sophomores and freshmen either because everybody has a role on this team, whether you are the four-year starter as a senior or the freshman who never played football before and is, you know, filling up the water bottles for the kids to drink during the game. Everybody had a role and that's what made this season so special. And as coach McGuire said, such a tight knit group. Uh, real quick, Vanessa Rivera saying greatest guy. So well deserved. Congrats. And a Megan McGuire, the McGuire girls love you all go cats. Uh, coach McGuire. What about you? Importance of the rings again for, as you as a coach players and a program. I mean, it's it's my first ring uh, as a high school coach. Um, I actually came through the same ranks as uh, as Coach Longo, um, coaching the uh, seventh and eighth graders for about three years, and then prior to that, uh, we coached together the fifth and sixth graders. And the last sure. time, my last year was 2008, and we actually won the Super Bowl then. So this is uh, this is some long overdue hardware um but yeah no i mean uh i wouldn't have wanted to do it with i mean these are the, the as far as knowledge is concerned um with these guys that i get to coach with every day and learn something new every single day i mean they're literally just like the greatest bunch of guys that you'll you'll ever come across um so it's been uh that's that's been a ride and and our kids are very special from top to bottom um they're all very respectful kids they're all tough kids and they're always willing to get better every single day so it it you know it it, it makes it easy as a coach uh, a couple comments coming in coach top 
McGuire, this is for you. Uh, it's from an Andy Rivera. Coach Tommy, will the man bun be making a comeback this season? <laughs> <laughs> All the secrets are coming. Yeah, out that's what I like. Uh, awesome. But but I, I knew McGuire would be entertaining. He would be entertaining. I, I gotta say this though, Coach the Breslin. Papers might indirectly, be but whatever. Coach Breslin is asking, did we ever see any video of footage dance. of Coach Mar dancing? So I don't. Did we ever well, see? Somebody got it. Somebody's Coach got Longo it. has it. Don't worry. Okay. okay so we want at the right sh- time. It will be released on the world. Okay. <laughs> we'll um, Dana Rodeo is saying, I'm ready to watch the 30 for 30 on this team. Congrats. Uh, um, awesome. Kenny Kirkpatrick has a Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let's let uh, Coach Marr answer that uh, question. Okay. Yeah. Importance of the ring. The ring. Um, kind of listen, you, okay. you coach the win. Uh, you're not always fortunate to, to have a group of kids that we have um, and, and to be in a special place like Beckton is. I mean, this will be my – this coming season will be my 10th total season there, and uh, i got to give a shout-out to – Chuck Callender, I don't know if he's watch or not, but Coach Callender was the um, very good friend of mine who was the former head coach who hired me as his offensive coordinator, uh, I guess it was 10 years ago, maybe nine years ago. Um, but, you know, I bounced around before that at different places at Coach College for a couple of years. Um, and then just to, to settle, to, to be settled in a place like Becton and to be able to have the staff that I have and the administration and the, the, the help, um, you know, it, it's it's not easy doing it by yourself, and I and I've said this many times before in many different ways. But I have so much help; it it makes my life a lot easier. And to do it with these guys, these coaches, and uh, and these kids, it was a very special group of kids. Awesome, uh, Coach Mar. Uh, a Megan Kathleen is saying Jackie Mar, proud little sister. <laughs> Giving you a shout out. Coach Farina saying everyone compliments each other and brings their talents to the table. All thanks to the ability of Coach Mar to let us shine. Uh, and Anna is saying, and again, back going back to uh, Coach McGuire, Andy, that's the question everyone wants to know. Bring back the man bun. Well, wait, wait, we, we didn't really get the full story, so can you uh, tell yeah. us about the man bun? <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I had, I grew my hair like down here, and for for Friday night games, it would, it it wasn't uh, a very popular thing in my house well um, coach who's megan mcguire that's, that's, my, that's my wife okay well your wife just commented in all caps no man bun so that might be the end of the man bun as you can see my, my head is completely shaved so my wife nor my three daughters didn't didn't uh didn't appreciate the man bun so did it become probably like won't a, be coming back did it become a superstition like did you not want to take it down did you not want to cut it or no just uh other than a running joke it was yeah for me it was a superstition <laughs> yeah, i guess you could say that yeah nice and uh you know i think coach was it coach breslin who asked uh they kenny were, kenny they, no 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 something oh. else that the coach longo that your your duck had eaten the ring had uh lost the ring on you there yeah. Chester, Chester the deck duck. Yeah, yeah no, I, I gotta, I gotta keep him away from things like that. He's, he's, he's all about that stuff. I got a whole fly out now, so I, I really gotta watch my back. Coach Breslin's also commenting to uh, Coach McGuire saying, "Smart move by cutting it off." Listening to the wife. Coach Breslin, you're awesome. By the way, I just want to throw that out there. The, uh, you know, uh, our friend Kenny Kirkpatrick had a great question, which kind of piggybacks off of the question that I wanted to ask. I was kind of, Coach Marr, going to look ahead to next season. And uh, Kenny kind of put in here, how do you build next year, uh, you know, on 10-1? and one, And what do you tell your new players coming in following such a great and memorable season for all? Um, you know, we had a, a, a very good balance of juniors and seniors this year and some some sophomores that were sprinkled in. Um and you know we're, we're looking forward next year. Well, we'll, we'll be competitive. Um, we'll, we're we're look. Listen, I mean, do we want to win everything again? Yeah. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll take it one game at a time. Uh, we have Hawthorne Week One, September third. That's on our radar right now. Um, so that's what we're really focused on right now. Nice. Okay. And um, last thing for you guys, if you guys just want to go around each, we'll end with Coach Mar. We'll go Coach McGuire, Coach Longo, and then Coach. Um, Coach Mar, is there any other uh, thank yous or shout outs you want to, you know, again, to the community for what you guys did with the ring uh, ceremony on uh, on Saturday or just anything in general? Any thank yous? 
Tom. Mm. Yo, you want me to go first? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, Melissa Dunn and uh, Joe Crafasi, um, Mrs. Crafasi, uh, Big Mark Dunn, um, our administration, uh, Dr. Swarza, um, Coach Bonanno, I still call him Coach because it was my coach and I, Coach Bonanno. Um, and if I'm missing anybody else, I apologize, I'm sure. Coach Longo, Coach Morrow, pick it up. Um, everybody, you know, they they jump through hurdles uh, for us all the time. And they're, I mean, they're the greatest people ever. Uh, and they put together an unbelievable ceremony um, that, uh, you know, it's going to be very hard to be topped uh, in the future. Along with uh, Coach Scalera, too. I got to give her a shout out. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. Their people are really special to us. So thank you. Uh, Megan Kathleen saying Mama Dunn is a saint for all things football and all things team on and off the field. Coach Longo, what about you? Yeah, obviously everything uh, Coach McGuire just mentioned, everyone he just mentioned, um, thank you all for that. Uh, the cheerleaders in the band as well were fantastic with us. You know, they had to deal with the same thing we had to deal with every single week, uh, masks and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and they did it just as well as we did. Uh, the parents, really, too. I mean, we have a special, special tight-knit group of parents with these kids right here. They've been through it. They've had the success. They know what to expect of their kids. They know what we expect of their kids, more importantly. Uh, and they really worked with us and allowed us to bring out the best in them uh, and our coaching staff. Uh, I don't really – you guys know. I mean, you've coached as well. But uh, the, the preparation that – now, coming from a recreation coach, I coach juniors for – 15 years, 10 and 11-year-olds, moving up to the high school ranks, I've never seen a group more prepared, more ready to prepare, more just just all about football and all about making their kids better, not just on the field, off the field, making – we want to make better adults first. We're not going to make NFL players here. Let's call it what it is. If, if we make them – you know, if we help – help them help mold them into young good young adults that's that's our first thing and these guys are without question are the absolute best and i'm honored to be able to work on this staff so thank you uh coach mcguire uh, coach mcguire katie jean is saying thanks coach mcguire and uh coach mar uh yeah just i mean everybody everybody that they just said also uh melissa dunn and her daughter maddie have really i mean they they constantly step up they so we didn't uh for our rings we nobody, not one kid, not one coach, paid a dime for them. Like we, we fundraised for that every every single penny, and um, that was all on Melissa Dunn and and Coach Fossey and Melissa, and, um, and Maddie Dunn helped out as well. Um, the our administration has kept that school open. I'm sure you guys have read it in a, in a online and in, in a newspaper uh, with with Darius Sifors, uh, Jim Bernano, and uh, and Annette, uh, Jean Caswell, our, our AD. Um, our AD has been very very accessible. She listen. It's not an easy job being an athletic director during a pandemic, and and she handled it pretty well. Uh, other people that really kept our season going were our nurses. Um, our nurses were beyond, uh, you know, over their head with what was going on. But I mean, they figured out real quick uh, with the contact tracing. It got forbid somebody did have it, but they they kept us on the field. Um, and we're really thankful for that. Um, you know, my assistant coaches, uh, the, the, their families, their their wives and girlfriends, and, and everybody, um, and and my family as well. I mean, my, my family has been has, has had my back since uh, since the day I started coaching, almost 20 years ago. So um, it's 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 a team effort from top to bottom. Nice, very nice. Uh, a couple more comments coming in from a Jeff Katz. So happy for this group. What an achievement! Honored to call a few of these coaches my friends. Coach Cicilano saying. Uh, that's what teachers do, mold the kids to be good citizens. And Melissa Dunn is saying, love all of you. <laughs> so she's giving you back what uh, what you guys are saying. And Carl Ross, for a, a regional school, people don't realize how small our school is. Carl Stout with a population of 5,400 and East Rutherford with 9,000 back our program so much on and off the field. Awesome community. And now we look forward uh, to the community of Maywood joining our tradition. Very nice. So, and I got to say this, guys, from coaching at St. Mary's, 
we were always rivals with Becton, you know? I don't think we were supposed to like Becton, but you know what? <laughs> now, it's like I'm friends with you guys. It's a whole new world. I, I can like Becton now. I like it. No, I'm joking about that. But uh, again, always great rivalry, St. Mary's, Becton, and we always knew we were going to get the best out of uh, – it, it was all, always a great game from coaching with Coach Ross and all you guys and Coach Bonanno and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, now it's like there's no more of the – the fiercest. We're friends, man. We love it now. We're friends. I just, I, I can't unzip my shirt because I think, yeah, it's, I think it's a St. Mary shirt. So I'm going to leave it zipped for tonight. So okay, the, the DMK shirt looks amazing. That's so it. The worry. DMK, yeah, tonight, yeah. But, uh, if, if I could, if I could real quick, guys, I just sure. want to give a quick shout out to Becton Softball. Yeah, I know they're coming uh, on the program later. Uh, all of us are watching the football team, the whole school. You guys are doing, you, you ladies are doing an amazing job. Keep it up. Win the whole thing. We're watching you. We're supporting you. Go back in softball. You know, I, I just, I just have to say that something that always, um, you know, amazes me with you guys at, as a school is, you know, obviously you're supportive of each other within your program, but it's just been, you know, it's been so nice to get to know you all this year and see what you do for each other, though, that you build up each other's programs, and it's such a good thing for your student athletes to see as well. So, I mean, you're talking, you know, like you guys have all kept it in perspective. It's nice to have the wins and the losses, but, you know, making your student athletes good people and, again, supporting the other programs, I, I just commend you guys for that because that's such an important lesson uh, for, for your player. So, it's always a pleasure to have you guys on. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys. Congrats again. You're always welcome. Of course, we'll have you guys on two, three weeks, probably will come. <laughs> Actually, you know, somebody's coming on from Beckton, you know? I mean, somebody will be on. But um, no, seriously, from the bottom of our hearts, I mean, we, we really appreciate you guys always coming on. Uh, we look obviously look forward to doing a lot of stuff with you guys in the future, and uh, congratulations. Very much. Thank you guys so much. Go Knicks, guys. Go Knicks, baby. Go Knicks. Go Knicks. <laughs> There you go. Have a good night, guys. Good night. All right, you Have a good night. Back. Thank Thanks you. Again. Happy belated birthday, John. Oh, by the way. thank you. Thank yes. you very much. Thank Happy you. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay, so our friends from back to high school, we're going to say. Um, no, it was a great interview with those guys. Again, what an unbelievable season. And the school in general. I mean, you know, we had you know, we had uh, the girls wrestling on and wrestling yeah, with Coach yep, Farina and yep. Isabella. And now we're going to have softball. And it's just a tremendous, um, it's a tremendous um, year to be. I mean, obviously, it's always, they have a great program everywhere. But even this year, it's a little more special. No, but it's really nice, nice to see. And like I said, you know, we've... You know, their their football coaches hooked up us with the softball. I mean, again, it's oh, such yeah. a yeah, close like you knit said. community. It's just so so nice to see. A and, couple uh, co uh, comment I did miss. Um, they only, uh, Coach Farina saying Melissa Dunn is an absolute saint, and we have uh, Rich Kirk uh, saying um, bloody nose is Jay. <laughs> So, uh, all right, well, we actually have our, our next guest ready to go. Should all right. I yeah, absolutely. Her? Let me get uh, Jenna Kleisler in for us here. And I'll officially introduce her once uh, once she's in. Hi, Jenna. How are you? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you guys? Good, good. Let me officially introduce you to our audience. We are welcoming Jenna Kleisler. Did I say your last name correctly, Jenna? Again. Okay, good. <laughs> one for one. All right. Uh, she is currently playing on the Brick Township High School girls lacrosse team. She was an all division player as a sophomore. She's a four year starter, two time captain. Her team is off to a seven and four start. She's leading them in goals and assists with 29 goals and 17 assists. She was the Shore Conference Player of the Week in week two of the season. And she's also a four year uh, letter winner in field hockey. So, Jenna, welcome to the show. And she's taking time away from her busy schedule. She's She's at work right now, if I'm not mistaken. No, I called out. Okay. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. We don't want to get you in trouble. <laughs> so welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Jenna. And uh, again, congratulations on all your accomplishment that uh, Jen just read. Uh, by the way, you are our first Brick Township um uh, guest guest yeah, on our absolutely. show so congratulations for that oh, thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> real quick if you could just give us a little bit about your background um particularly like how you got into playing lacrosse okay well gianna duraso my cousin I'm, you're yeah you're familiar we're all, yep, well yep. fourth grade i started i had no idea what it was but i knew she played i was like okay i'm just gonna try it out and it kind of just stuck not really interesting but 
now. That's no, that's, that's, that's fine. That's a, uh, no, that's a great role model to have. You know, I, uh, I, I just for the audience, I actually work with uh, Jenna's cousin, Roseanne, Gianna's mom. And then I actually coached Gianna in high school in basketball. I was lucky enough to have a phenomenal athlete. So that that's great. That's a great role model to have to get you into the sport of lacrosse. That's awesome. So let's talk Is about- Is that Gianna making the comment? Uh, yeah, Mar- uh, I would say yes. Yep. Gianna Marie <laughs> saying, woohoo, go Jenna. <laughs> and our good friend Kenny Kirkpatrick from Maryland saying first south of the Driscoll Bridge guest. Oh, so true. that's We've it. We've been out west, but we haven't gone south. That's yet. it. <laughs> So uh, let's talk a little bit about this lacrosse season. I'm sure it's probably taking on like a special meaning to you, especially since you, you know, as a senior lost your junior season last year. So I was telling, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about like how you guys got back into the swing of things and what it's like to finally be back in action. Well, yeah, it was a little difficult. Obviously it's exciting, you know, I'm fortunate to be playing considering last year. Um, we're a very young team, so a lot of us have only been playing for two years. Um, so, you know, stick skills wise, it's a little hard, but I'm very proud of our team because we grew so much from the beginning. So the beginning was a rough start in the season and everything. I'm sure all the other teams are in the same position. So... You know, we, every time we have like a spring athlete or coach on, I always think of the seniors, like, which is you. And now last year you were a junior and you missed your season. So the last time you played, you were a sophomore, you know, is that so such a big jump coming from your sophomore season? And now you really jump to being like a senior captain. So how has that adjustment been for you? It's weird. <laughs> it's really weird because, you know, um, you're expecting, you know, last season you're expecting, oh, like I know who I'm playing with, whatever. And, you know, scouting wise, you know, um, you know what team has what players. But since we're missing that year last year, it's like big, everything is up in the air. So it's very weird, confusing and Every, yeah, it's just crazy, kind of. Yeah, I believe it. Um, I, I have a question off the script. Um, were you? Did you ever like fear that this season would be in jeopardy? Also, oh, every day, every day. If someone in our conference comes down with COVID and we've played them, we're out for two weeks, and that could possibly be the end of season. That's I mean, so even, every- I, I mean, even like the just that there would even be a start of it. You know, like, when did you really kind of feel a little confident, like, all right, we're going to start this? Because, again, like we said, last year got shut down. You didn't really have that spring. So now, like, going into, like, your senior, I mean, you know, we always talk about it, like we say, like, you're a senior, you, you know, you don't have that, that final sport. And it's, like, heartbreaking, you know? I mean, we all played sports. It's like, I couldn't imagine not having my senior year. So, you know, like, w- once you guys, I guess, started, were you, I guess, a little relieved is the word. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Totally. I was very relieved. You know, losing that last season was very heartbreaking. Um, When they started figuring out that, oh, like, we're going to push volleyball off and see how that works, I knew right away we would have a season because they're trying to make time and room for other sports. And since we did spring sports lost their season, I knew they would try and make some kind of time to us have a season, whether it was going to be in summer or start it later, which we did start later. So... Yeah, so if you could um if you could talk a little bit, Jenna, about just uh brick athletics. Uh two part question. What does it take to be an athlete at Brick and what does it mean to be an athlete at Brick Township? Well, since we are a very small school, everyone knows everyone. So what it takes doesn't take much to be an athlete. It's more of a building experience. Uh everyone's a family, you just gotta get to know each other. Um it's good dynamics, you know, tough. We're considered very scrappy when we play in sports, hardworking, all of love, <laughs> I don't really, you know, just dig deep pretty much. If you want to be an athlete, you could be an athlete at Brick. And what about, and how about uh, the meaning of it? Like when you look back and, you know, again, you'll probably, you know, you're going to look back more when you're older and say what it meant to you. But like now, what does it mean? Like, you know, how proudful when you say, you know, I'm an athlete at Brick Township. Uh, it's very, I'm, I would I consider myself very proud to be an athlete at Brick Township because with my sports, the past couple of years, we've been very successful in my teams. We broke very, a lot of records. Uh, we actually made the short conference tournament for the first time ever this year for girls across. Uh, for field hockey, we made the short conference 
first time ever my freshman year. We made it to the second round of states, actually the finals, the championships for states for field hockey. There's a lot of accomplishments. I know for me, I can say I'm very proud to be an athlete there to have these memories and be part of the history. That's great. You um, Now, if I'm not mistaken, again, we're much, a little more north, but do you play some bigger schools down where you are? Like, I feel like there's, like, really big schools. Southern region was yeah. our big school here. They're a tough team. Yeah. I always have fun playing them because they're <laughs> so good. They're so good, and you can learn so much from them. Oh, that's, oh, that's a great attitude to have. Now, I know you're a two-sport athlete, right? So uh, field hockey and lacrosse. And, you know, doing my research, I was actually was saying to your to your cousin Roseanne in school, I'm like, I always feel like I'm, like, stalking these kids when I do the research. I'm, like, watching your huddle videos, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, <laughs> but the, um, you know, so can you explain to, you know, our viewers, like the, your commitment to both sports, you know, what it's like to be a two sport athlete, what you're doing in the off season. And, and then my second part of the question is if you're looking to play at that next level next year. Uh, yeah. For the second question, I'm playing at Lebanon Valley college. Oh, nice. Cross. I didn't realize you were committed. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> lacrosse or lacrosse awesome oh, nice. nice excellent so i'll be playing there um for off season since my sports are in the fall and spring i kind of have that winter to work on myself and make sure i'm in the right shape for the following season and since spring basically transforms into fall i'm already pretty much in shape but you know you, you got to work in the off season so i just run make sure i'm lifting weights so i don't tear any important muscles or anything so I'm actually in a good position with the fall and the spring. Other kids, I don't know how they do like three sports and like, no. <laughs> it, it, well, you know what? And even, uh, you know, I know just from being a former high school coach, like even, you know, yes, that winter season really can sometimes like, you know, make it more difficult. But, um, you know, your your coaches want you committed, you know, even if you're in the spring, you know, like your field hockey coach wants you to play in this league or play on this club team. You know, did you find it difficult to manage that? And of course, being a student on top of it. <laughs> uh, I didn't really find it difficult to manage because I've been doing this for a lot of years. So you kind of get used to it in a way. And I did a lot of, uh, I did fall like uh, winter, like I did winter leagues. I did the fall, like um, a league, and then I also did travel for lacrosse in the summer. So, it, it I wouldn't say it was difficult because, like I said before, I kind of got used to it. It's like you know, yeah. no other way, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nice, very cool. Coach- no you know <laughs> our good friend coach Ciciliano is saying congratulations and he's saying he's a, a personal he was a personal trainer and he's big into the lifting so he said weight lifter love it lol so, it's so important yeah definitely jen i have a question um uh, not a question if you can just take a little time now um and talk about some of your teammates on the uh on the lacrosse team uh, a lot of the teammates I've been playing since Bandits, which are, is our club league for my town, uh, since fourth grade. I love them. I'm going to miss them terribly when I leave n- this year. It's going to be hard. They're so – they're just stubborn on the field, very stubborn on the field. They don't give up. We're strong-headed, um, always with the best attitudes. The one thing I can say this year is we have very good connections on the field, very good team dynamic, and I can – have been happier to finish a season with these girls. I have nothing but good things to say about them. Oh, that's so awesome. nice. That makes it uh, even better. So if you wanted to maybe take a moment then to highlight some of your coaches who've helped you along the way and, you know, been a part of, you know, played in your success. Oh, uh, Crane Coyle, of course, she's our head coach. Uh, Kelly O'Brien, she's a field, ho- field hockey and the um, – co-captain for co-coach for um lacrosse but she was on maternity leave she had a baby so she's out for this year unfortunately um trying to think um that's all i can really say for right now i mean (laughs) that's good i'm kind of blanking but (laughs) Well, our next section we like to do with you is a little more um, fun inspired questions that we call rapid fire. So uh, I always I always give it that build up and then there's sometimes they're the more hard hitting questions, it turns out. But so these are meant to be a little more fun and rapid paced. Okay, I will start. What is your best uh, brick township sports memory? Um, Scoring the game winning goal for field hockey for uh, the semifinals. Oh, exciting. Who is that against? That was against Allentown. 
Oh, nice. Very nice. All right. Toughest loss or like game that you wish you could get back, like have a do over on. Oh, <laughs> we just had this recently. Jackson Memorial. Oh. Oh. Just lost to them yesterday. That was hard. That was hard. <laughs> okay. You're, uh, you're obviously more down south and, you know, we envy that life. We just actually <laughs> was, we're down, down south on a little mini vacation, but you're down there full time. So the one, you know, the $1 million question, do you prefer the beach or the pool? The beach and then the pool. Okay. <laughs> Good. That's fair. That's and fair. Go to the beach and then you come home and jump in the pool. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Who has been your biggest fan throughout your high school sports career? My mom and my dad. They come to every single game. My dad films the games. So they have been my biggest fan. My mom actually, I'm tomorrow possibly I'll be getting my hundredth, my hundredth point. Oh, nice. And she spent all day making these signs oh. for me for tomorrow. <laughs> Nice. That's awesome. Oh, pre-congratulations. We'll have to follow tomorrow and see. Well, put a lot of pressure in it. You better better get it tomorrow now. I didn't say anything. She did a lot of work. You better get that tomorrow. Uh, Gianna's also saying they have the best backyard and pool. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, One of our commenters is saying, Seaside Heights or Point Pleasant? That is the question. Um. Ooh, see, I'm in between both of them. Uh, I would say Point Pleasant only because they, I like their boardwalk a little more. Okay. So I'm literally right in between them. So like 10 minutes that way, 10 minutes the other way. So you got the I best of both that. worlds. Yeah. I, I do. <laughs> see, when we go down and visit, we like, when we stay in Lavalette, like we have that too, but our meaning is, okay, do we want to go midway for meatballs or do we want to go to uh, the tiki bar for the steak sandwich? I like, so it's like, you know, yeah. we, that's our halfway. That's what we have to decide. We're all about food here. Was well, if you the- ever come down again, if you come down this summer, I would go to Finn's. Okay. Oh, now where's that? Um, It's in Point Pleasant. Oh. It's, a, it's before you, it's by Bridge Ave. It's so good. They have the best raps ever. Oh, nice. Good to You're know. a rap person. <laughs> I am a rap person. You're and a, you a, are a quiet person. I, yes. <laughs> uh, a couple more comments. Gianna, Gianna saying the best family and saying <laughs> that something, they have the best backyard and pool. So yeah. you're getting <laughs> props. <laughs> uh, okay. My last one is in the brick area. Jen's more of the, the rap person, but I am a huge, huge, huge pizza person. So give me somewhere in your area. Give me a good, the best, you know what? The best pizza place. I will recommend where I work. Oh. Neo's All Fire Pizza. Look at their Instagram. They make the best pizzas ever. Oh, the nice. best pizza. Such good Italian food. Everything is homemade. Their tiramisu is so good. Ooh, we might My favorite pizza there is probably the buffalo pizza. Okay, give it, give it, give it a shout out again. What's the name of it? Nino's Coal Fired Pizza. There it is. All right, write good it to down. Know. Good to know. We should, will... I'm in some of their videos. Just saying. So. All right. Hey, okay. <laughs> So so, can we go in there and say we know a celebrity? We have we know a, a star athlete there when we if we walk in. Uh, they'd probably be confused because I don't really talk about my sports. Okay, there. okay then we'll, we'll keep it on They'd the be quiet. like, you have the wrong pizza place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we are going to be in Lavalette this summer. So, yes, we'll, uh, we we'll might, definitely we check be, that uh, out. Taking a little Maybe around. a waitress on you guys. Oh, so, there you go. Say, there we'll you go. definitely let you know. <laughs> All right, my last rapid fire for you, Jenna, is obviously we're a sports show. But when you're not playing field hockey or lacrosse or working at Nino's, what else do you enjoy doing? So I like to read. That's my new hobby. I've been reading a lot lately. I like to paint also. Nice. Um, let's see what else. I'm probably just hanging with my friends. So I've got a really good group of friends this year. So I'm happy about that. Very nice. nice. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, Jenna, and uh, we will be following along tomorrow. Good luck tomorrow, but of course, the rest of your season and into your collegiate career as well. I'll definitely be asking Roseanne and Gianna how you're doing. So I'm so pleasure, absolute pleasure to have you on. Well, thank you for having me. This was definitely an experience. <laughs> no, awesome. You were great. And yeah. uh, again, we'll definitely uh, check back with you in the future, and we will hopefully see you at um nino's, nino's. because uh i'm uh, i'm pumped up for about uh, for that i'll tell you that it's so good i'm telling you we're, we're, listen you don't have to sell me on good pizza i'm in i'm in all right thanks so thanks much for jenna. Having me. good night thanks jenna 
You know, it's Coach funny. Longo, I'm sorry, Coach Longo, great interview. Best of luck to Jenna. Oh, Coach so Breslin, nice. great job. Good luck to you the rest of the way. So, so two nice. shout outs from our great two coaches. You know, I'm, I'm glad she mentioned that she's going for her 100th point because as I was researching today, you know, I'm looking at her stats and I'm thinking in my head, like, we've talked about this, these kids who miss milestones and one of the, a milestone, you know, that she might have been able to get was her 100th goal. So I'm glad right. that her 100th point, that's uh, um, that's really good to hear uh, yep. that she will be able to have that type of celebration. We talked about with the wrestling coaches, you know, the winning, I think, is it 100 matches? I think they do for 100 yeah. in wrestling as well, right? So, um, but missing that season, that's in that could be in jeopardy, mm -hmm. those things. So best of luck to her. Hope she snags that tomorrow for sure. Yes. Pressure's on. <laughs> I think she'll. I think she'll come through for sure. Absolutely. Well, we actually have. Um, we're actually waiting on a. Uh, Coach Kafaro in the, uh, in the, uh, in the waiting room. But his three players are here. Do we want to run, one of our. Sponsors. Yeah, what we'll do is I'll run. Yeah, we'll run the um, we'll run one of our sponsors, one of our ads again. We want to thank all our sponsors, uh, Kimber's Tots. We want to thank uh, Kimber's Tots, and we will uh, we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with, guess what? Another, Another team Beckton. from Beckton. <laughs> We'd like to welcome um, the Beckton girls softball players and their coach, Coach Cafaro. Coach, am I saying your name correctly, Cafaro? Yes. Okay. Uh, their team is off to an 11-1 start overall, undefeated in conference play. And Coach brings with him senior pitcher Carly Pullman, junior shortstop Nicole Henke, and senior catcher Kayla O'Brien. So welcome, guys, and thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys for, of course, coming on. 11-1, uh, Becton, with an unbelievable season. Ranked, I believe, Coach, where you guys got the number six seed in the Bergen County Tournament? Yes. Okay. Yes, six number, seed is correct. Number six seed. Um, so, obviously, you guys have got to be excited about that. Again, everybody, thank you guys for all coming on. Coach, I'll just start with you. If you could just give us a quick uh, recap of your uh, season so far. All right. Well, um, we opened up first game of the season against Nutley, uh, which was a 3-2 loss in nine innings. But, uh, you know, being at Nutley, being a group three school and back in a group one, um, you know, I've been saying it to my entire team that even though it was a loss, it was a win for us because we know that we can compete with the bigger schools. And since then, we've won 11 in a row. So that's our only loss of this season. So, so far, so good. Nice. Uh, and uh, girls, my question is for you guys. We'll go. Um, I'm just going to go uh, in the order you kind of uh, appear on my screen here. We'll go uh, Nicole and then Carly and then Kayla. Uh, you guys are having an awesome season. Uh, I'm just wondering what you attribute this year's success to. Um, I think overall, like, 
I think like the team just like really like comes together and like um, just overall like we just playing like Nutley it was just a good start and you know. I think that our energy is just what really brought us together this year. Like we all really want to be on the field and you can just tell that like every game we're hype, we're ready to go. And it makes us come together as a team and we play for each other instead of playing against each other. And I think that's really important. Um, I'd say the same thing as Carly. I feel like every game we come out like a hundred percent all the time. Like even coach gives off the same energy. Like we're always giving a hundred percent. And I think that if we just keep playing like that, like like Coach says all the time, like no team can like beat us. We can beat yeah, anybody in Oregon County, so or play. So nice. All right, I'm gonna come right back to the girls. You have the order of yep. uh, who we're gonna nice. go. Uh, I think they would Nicole and then Carly and then Kayla. Yep. Okay, so obviously, <laughs> like you guys said, eleven in a row, six seed in the uh, Bergen County tournament. Uh, for a small school, that's just awesome with all like the the bigger schools and stuff. So the respect you guys are getting to be a six C, that's pretty pretty good, um, very good actually. So, what's your remaining goals for the rest of the season? Um, I think you know just to like give a hundred percent like every game. Um, I think that that's like our goal, and like we just want to win. So we're that's like our goal. We want to win. I think. Our goal is to get better each game and really have fun with the season. For a lot of us, this might be our last season. We just really want to get our all and play for each other. And I really think we can take it this year. So I'm really rooting for us. <laughs> um, I'd say the same thing. Like, give 100% every day and, like, never slack off because we do have times where, you know, like, we go 10 innings. I don't know if you can tell a lot of games, and, but we never like end a fight. Like we always keep going and we know, yeah, we may go into 10 innings and give Kamara a heart attack. But, <laughs> but Every um, I think we always just know, like at the end of the day, like we all know what we want and we all know what we want to pursue. And like, this is our year. So we're not scared to compete at all. So. Hey, you got to look at it this way, going all those extra inning games. I mean, it's, you can't say you guys never had adversity, you know? I mean, you guys are going to be you're primed and ready for, you know, county games and state games and stuff like that. A couple comments from Becton Football. Go Cats. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Hashtag group one. Coach Breslin saying awesome season so far. Keep up the great work. You know, I'm going to go a little off script, uh, Coach Cafaro. My question is for you. I'll, I'll get to my original question, but, you know, as you may sure. have heard us say, you know, we had on um, Becton football, we've had on wrestling, uh, e each of them a couple of times. And, you know, I just noticed, you know, which, you know, not by, not that it makes it some big thing to notice, it's very evident, just what a um, tight knit group you guys are there in terms of coaches and like the programs even and how you all support each other. I know this is your first year, first year, second year technically, but first year with competition, right? So um, mm -hmm. how is it to come yeah. in and be a part of that, um, you know, a athletic program uh, at Becton with, so that is so tight knit? Well, um, before I came to Becton, I was the head coach at We Talk in uh, for six years and Anytime we would have to play Becton, and Becton is, is in our league, um, it was always a tough battle. And Becton is, they're always good in, in every sport. So I knew getting this position, which lucky to have, I got this position, and uh, I knew there was talent, and, and I knew we could, you know, you know, who knows what we can do as far as, you know, we have a chance right now, we can win our league. You know, we have a very good possibility to be a section champ. And who knows how far we can go in the counties. I mean, the, the counties would probably be our toughest task because there are so many teams and so many competitive teams in it. But um, I'm happy that we got the six seed because I, I think that gives us a better chance to, to move forward with that. Nice. And my original question was going to be kind of, you know, having this great start to your first season of competition, right, is uh, where do you hope to take the program from here even after this season? Well, just to keep competing and, you know, even though we lost last year and we had three years last year that we lost and, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking that they didn't get a chance to play because those three players would have definitely helped our team last year. 
and not having them this year, uh, we still manage. Uh, we're very talented, uh, you know, top to bottom. Uh, everyone, you know, can play the field. We can hit. We can run. So uh, I'm looking forward to the future that after this year, you know, everyone's going to know what Becton softball is all about, and hopefully we can, you know, keep pursuing. So we'll see what happens. Nice. Uh, a couple comments, a couple comments from our audience. Um, and actually, before I, I ask Kenny's question, Coach, for the state tournament, is it like your normal, is it going to be like a normal state tournament, or is there any changes this year? Yes, uh, as of right now, it's going to be a normal state tournament. So. Okay, awesome. And uh, his question is for for the the states and the uh, I guess he meant the counties. Is the county going to be on like like is it a neutral field or are you guys home in the first couple rounds? Um, it's the the highest seed will get the home games the first few rounds. Okay, uh, a couple more comments. Uh, this is from a Joe Romano. Great team, great group of girls who've got each other's backs. Carly Pullman is a beast in the circle, a fierce competitor who drives the team to never give up. They leave everything they have on the field every game. Coach Longo saying the spotlight is completely on Becton softball now, and it's so well-deserved. Congrats on the great start. Coach Cafaro, ladies, finish the job. Hashtag um, Becton softball. Rich Kirk is saying these girls have been playing together a long time. Uh, they are ready to climb this mountain. Let's go get this group one uh championship so nice that's great support that's awesome <laughs> uh coach real, again great. i'm sorry one more thing off i, I know I'm, I'm hitting coach with all the questions but <laughs> just i know he's a right. coach he looks ahead but um and i know it's it's early but um just a brief overview of your of the of the group one uh bracket how do you guys think you stack up in uh you know with, with the teams in that bracket well well right now in our section we are uh the number two seed we go by powerpoints so uh, Wimpany Park is is the one seed right now. They are are twelve and zero. Uh, actually, they might, they might be thirteen and zero. Uh, and right now we're, we're second seed with the PowerPoint. So, um, I mean, the way it goes right now, I mean, if you know, we just got to take every game. Doesn't matter who we play. Uh, you know, come state tournament, the records are zero and zero. So you know, we have to play. We got to win. We just got to we just got to keep going. So. Um, I think Wimpany Park is, you know, right now they're the one seed, so they're, I would say, the the favorite to win. But you know, they haven't played us yet, so that's we'll it. See. There you go. Okay, and Carl Ross is saying my twin granddaughters think their babysitter Nicole is the best. <laughs> so Nicole, you're getting a shout out for uh, your babysitting skills. She, she's okay. She's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Carly and Caleb, uh, pitcher-catcher combination. Um, I guess, how long have you guys – I, I, I know you guys said you guys – a couple of people in the comment were saying you guys have played together, like I guess in the junior ranks and stuff like that. So how long have you guys been pitcher-catcher combo together? And uh, how is it – like how's your relationship on the field? You know, do you uh, – Carly, do you shake her off? Or, you know, do you guys, you know <laughs> – I mean, that's just, you know, it's, it's baseball thing too. It's how it was, you know, pitcher and catcher. You, you love each other. You hate each other. Then at the end, it's like, you know, you always, the catcher, the, the pitcher always blames the catcher. I, I didn't want to throw it that way. And it's, just, it's love and hate. But uh, what's your relationship with each other? We've played against each other for quite some time when we were younger. And then when we got to Becton, it was sort of like, hi, we have to work together now. And then since then, we've kind of been like inseparable. Every game, we put our trust in each other and we develop each other. So if I throw warm-ups and I'm not throwing it right, she tell me straight up, it is not working. <laughs> and I will have to switch it and she'll make the corrections for me and we'll work through it. Last game, my screwball wasn't working. She told me straight up, you screwball is not <laughs> working. They're going to bomb it. You need to switch to something else. And I took it and we worked together and it always works out. We just... We don't take anything personally. We move forward as a team, and we have a better bond because of it. That's awesome. Awesome. What about you, Kayla? Yeah, I think since freshman year, like, me and her have been, like, the starting pitcher and the starting catcher, so it's always been we've been very close on the field. Um, and even off the field, I think we just have a very strong bond. Um, I also feel like when we're on the field, it's like – me and her, like, I always give her, like, that signal, like, it's me and you, like, nobody around us really matters, just, like, you to pitch to me, and that's really game time, like, whatever happens in warm-ups doesn't matter, like, 
whatever you get on the field, whatever you throw, like we're ready. Like it doesn't doesn't really phase us. Like I know like me and her are very like our strong our strong bond on the field is just like we block everybody out. And Carly does a great job at pitching and I tell her all I'll tell her straight up because that's how I am as a catcher, but she always does a job and she's always doing good. So You know what, as a former coach and, and Jen could say that too, I just think that's awesome on both things. Like, you know, like you're not afraid to like yeah. you're saying, Hey, you you know, you gotta be honest. I mean, it's a game, you gotta be honest. And Carly, I give you a lot of credit too for not being like, you know, who are you to say that? Yeah. Like, hey, you know, like you put your trust in her. You guys work together. I mean, you're the battery, and um, I, I just think that's awesome. They were both better for it. That is. That's yep. great. That's awesome. So, Nicole, you're a junior, right? So next year you'll return as an experienced leader to the team. So what have these seniors instilled in you that you want to make sure you pass on to future Becton softball players? Well, um, they're always, like, you know, leading the team, talking, um, like telling everyone, like, you need to give 100% every game. And I think that's just like, and I'm a short stop, so I have to take leadership. And I'm just looking forward to that. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, we're going to roll into a little rapid fire with you guys, some more quick paced questions. So, uh -oh. <laughs> so we put the pressure on Nicole earlier to be first. So I'm going to switch up the order. Kayla, you're going to go first, then Carly, followed by Nicole, and then Coach, you'll, you'll go last. Sound good? Okay. All right. Start us off. All right. So you can answer this. Baseball or, or softball, obviously, but who is your favorite baseball or softball player of all time? I'd say Judge from the Yankees. Okay. A lot. Judge. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, you want to go? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I got to go with Sis Bates from Washington. Um, well, my favorite baseball player, I mean, even though I'm a Yankee fan, but I'm all about Cal Ripken, so... Nice, very nice. All right, my question is, do you have any pregame rituals or superstitions? Um, I feel like I have to, like, sing, like, at that or, like, like, I don't know, like, it's really, it's really bad to say that, but, like, as a hitter, like, you think so much, and, like, bef like, once I get up a bat, I feel like I have to, like, sing or, like, I don't even know, like, hum to myself to like not think about anything or chew gum like I feel like that's like something that I need to do before a game or else I think too much before games they start rolling up the red bulls I think that's a tradition and then also they make me do their eye black because they think I'm really good at it and then I mess up and I don't tell them <laughs> they can't see it so that's perfect <laughs> Um, I just gotta get like fired up before the games, like some music. Um, and like Kayla said, when I'm a bat, I just kind of like talk to myself, and I can sing to myself sometimes too. <laughs> just like block out everything, and yeah. Well, I have a few, but I don't know if I have enough time for all of them. But, uh, <laughs> but um, I get OCD with certain things, so um, I always double check the lineup. I always go over everyone's number uh, and line up, even though I, I know it by heart, but <laughs> I just got to, I just got to keep doing it. I, I must go over the lineup maybe three or four times and, you know, obviously it works, but uh, it's just a little, you know, a little thing that, that I have to do all the time to just double check. I always got to double check things, so. Uh, coach McGuire is saying, Carly and my daughter have the same pitching coach every now and then in the off season, we get to see her. She throws absolute fire. So <laughs> Coach McGuire is giving you a shout out. Now, we all, we, we've had the um, the football coaches on and some of the players also, but we had the coaches on a bunch of times. And they gave us a couple of places, but we want to go to the girls today. We want the answer. <laughs> and Coach, of course, but what, it's is, okay. what is your – what is the best – pizza place in the Karlstadt East Rutherford area girls I work at a pizza place so I'm biased but <laughs> I, uh, best pizza in the American dream shout out very very good okay Mr. Pizza uh, I don't know Master Pizza I don't know <laughs> Master Pizza I think is the one we were um, is that the one I think we went to Oh, I don't know. I think John Bielan yeah, gave okay. it to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I believe that is. 
Oh, um, do you want uh, my answer? Oh, yes, yeah, of yeah, course. Definitely. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't live in East Rutherford or Carset, so I live in Nutley. So um, there's probably one thing about Nutley. There's a pizzeria, a hair salon, and a nail salon at every <laughs> corner. <laughs> yes, there is. Coach, so, we're, Coach, we're in Clifton. We go to Nutley. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if I had to pick and – I mean, there, there's so many in town, but if, if I had to pick one, I, I have to go with Ralph's Pizza. And not I've, we've been there. <laughs> I was at the one. Uh, yes. Yep. The, okay. All right. Nice, 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 nice. All right. Mine's a simple one. Dunkin' or Starbucks? Kayla, you want to start us off? It's tough one. <laughs> Hard hitting here. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I go to both, but I guess Dunkin', yeah. Dunkin' Starbucks gives me anxiety because if I order too long, I feel mean. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go with Dunkin' too. Um, I'm actually going to go with 7-Eleven. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Okay. 7-Eleven <laughs> okay. is – I'm old school. By the way, Coach, um, our good friend Kenny Kirkpatrick is saying, Coach, 20 years ago, I worked at Rockies in Nutley. So he's saying he worked at Rutley. Uh, oh, okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, and my last one is, and Coach, you're going to answer it a little different. Um, okay. But, and Coach only has 12 games to answer it because the girls <laughs> have, you know, three or four years. But what is the one biggest play, biggest pitch, you know, biggest put out that you guys have made in your Becton softball career so far? Um, I'd say this year um, with IIC, um, it was a really big, like, achievement for us. Uh, to a point where, like, we were just, like, all shook about it. When Carly struck out the last batter, I think all of us just didn't know what to do. <laughs> um, I, I see he's been, like, the top team to beat, and, like, that was always a team that was very good, always stacked with good players, like, and this year, I think we just had that different mindset, and when Carly struck out the last batter, all I could do was just throw my mask and just run into the circle and, like, even back in the videos, I think that's our best achievement this year. And our energy was just crazy. Coach was screaming. Like, I think that was our best achievement. Like, best best memory I would always remember to this day. So. Okay. I think I've watched that video in, like, six different scenes. And <laughs> I almost cry every single time I watch it because I think that was our, like, rink of, like, success as a team and I know for myself like that was my biggest achievement that I've ever done and I know this is probably my last year playing and like I feel like everything that I've ever done and every pitch I've ever thrown has led up to that last strikeout and when me and Kayla did that like I just looked at her and I was like oh my god we did not just do that and I feel like everybody kind of just stopped and we all didn't run very fast like there was probably should have been more excitement but no one really knew how to react and then suddenly like everybody just started crying and it was great like even my coach comes to me like crying her eyes out i was like oh god no not me too and it was just <laughs> really great um yeah definitely that game was really exciting but um also like the Warriors game i had a really good um offensive game so that was really exciting for me same with nutley that was just a really fun game to play just overall so uh, Coach McGuire saying Nicole hit a ball a few years ago at a tournament in Woodridge that still hasn't landed yet. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, what about you? Is it the IC game? Um, yeah, I mean, how, how can it not be? You know, I mean, I, I've always go back to, to the Nutley game, uh, being that I live in the town and, you know, I know the coaches very well and a lot of the, you know, the players. I mean, it's a great program. And, but, uh, I mean, that IC game is just, I mean, that's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. But you know what? Like I've always said, you know, you know, any given day and any team can be beaten. So you just, as long as you do what you're supposed to do, uh, you're going to come out victorious. So, and, you know, we were lucky we did, and we went to, you know, extra innings, like seems like we like to do and, <laughs> uh, you know, came on top. So that, that was definitely, definitely a very big accomplishment. For the program. But coach, coach, it helps when you have that really good pitcher, though, doesn't it? Coach makes life a lot <laughs> yeah, easier, right? I know, mean, come on. And a catcher and a of short course. Of course. <laughs> hey, I was telling fielder, Jen. You know. I was telling Jen right up, right up the middle, right? Catcher, second, short, center field. That's like. <laughs> well, you, you know what it right? is too. If 
if I could have everyone on in our program on our varsity team because they're all deserving. Uh, they've always everyone has chipped in. It's always a total team effort. Yep. Um, I mean, you know, if it was up to me, I I, I would have them all here with us tonight. But I, and I you know, know what, coach, in the future you can you can you know we bring the whole team Maybe. on, coach. We'll hey, we bring the whole we'll team. See. So my last one for you guys is about your biggest rival. So either, you know, it could be a personal rivalry that you have or like your school. So throughout your whole time you've been at Becton, who would you say is the biggest rival on your schedule? So other than IC, I feel like that was our biggest rival. But I'd say Heights, um, only because Heights has, was, I think, uh, two-time like in our league that they won or three-time. They've always been really good. They've always had um, that pitcher, Olivia, and they've always been, like, stacked with a good team and a good coach. Um, I just feel like that was always a team to beat, but somehow it was never – we never found a way to beat them. And I feel like if we had our seniors, like, last year with us today, I feel like it would be such a great game, and I feel like that's top rival team, so. I'm still going to say I see – because I feel like we measure ourselves up to them constantly. Like the last couple seasons that we played them, we were always like, oh, we need to beat this team. Like we need to measure ourselves up to them. Like we know we'll be great when we beat them. And I feel like when we finally did that, it was really awesome for all of us. Yeah, definitely I see in Heights. Um, it was a good – Heights, playing Heights this year – got us pumped we won both times because we usually we're usually really really good um and I is just always going to be our rival so <laughs> well for me it's it's uh since it's only my second year here but you know prior to it was at Weehawk and so I, I am familiar with the conference and, and I mean in the past uh you know, Saddlebrook was was a, a tough program when uh, you know Darren White was there. You know, very well established coach, over 500 something wins. Uh, they were always, you know, the upper echelon in, in the league, along with Heights and Heights. It, it seems like it was always them three. Um, but now, I mean, the way it's going right now, you know, everything is different, and we're on top right now. Hopefully, we can stay on top, and we'll we'll see what happens. Nice. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining us this evening. It was an absolute pleasure to have you guys on. We wish you much continued success throughout the rest of the season along the way. Yep. Coach, good luck, like you said, in the league, in the counties, in the sections. And, hey, um, you and girls, obviously, you guys too. And, hey, go, you know, do your best. And, hey, get, you know, go get some championships, guys. Get another ring. That's it. Get another school. ring. <laughs> Thanks for, have, thanks for having us. No yeah, problem. It was a pleasure. Thank you, good night, thank guys. you guys. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. See you. So we might be having, you know, another another ring ceremony. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, back to football. Great job tonight, coach and ladies. Good luck, Coach Breslin. Congratulations. Keep working hard. Best of luck in the tournaments. Um, we're going to get to our – before I get yelled at, <laughs> Mr. Kirkpatrick, he's saying I didn't pay attention today, but I've been all over it. Um, our, you know, his uh, his rank five. So do you want to read it real quick? Uh, well, he asked us to do um, the top five over the past decade, right? Rank the top five softball programs. You were Bergen County and I was Essex County, correct? Yes. Did I get that right? All right. So I'll go first. I have mine... Are, I think I have to start with the Mount, Mount St. Dominic in Essex County. Okay. Um, and I went with, um, you know, a couple a couple of teams that were mentioned this evening. Caldwell. I'm sorry, I'm, Nutley, I meant to say first. Nutley. Um, Cedar Grove has been strong. I'm going to go with West Essex and Caldwell. All right. Mine's... Again, we're talking, you know, longevity here, not just this season. So, right. Yeah. Um, Bergen County, I mean, four comes, I'm probably forgetting one. Uh, I'm not going to put them in any order. I don't. Again, they're, they're all fantastic programs, mm -hmm. but obviously you got to put IHA, you got to put IC, mm -hmm. like Coach and the girls were saying. Um, Indian Hills, phenomenal program. Um, I know Ramapo. Uh, you know, I know Ramapo is a little down. Like not what I'm saying, a little down compared to what they were. But I know maybe ten years ago. I mean, they were dynamite for a, a couple years where they were winning everything. Uh, I also have to throw Ramsey in there. Ramsey's very good. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm not sure if I am missing anybody else in Bergen County. I mean, those are the four that that come to mind. Well, you did five. You got Ramapo. Yeah, I put Ramapo, yeah. but I mean, I, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm going to do that more, uh, Coach Breslin saying IHA, Indian Hills, Ramsey, or three that he's aware mm-hmm. of. And again, I'm obviously going to put IC in. I yeah. mean, my sister was there, I know. Uh, they were dominant, winning, I think, oh six, eight titles yeah. in a row. Yeah. So I am going to put them in there. Um, you know, I know, again, Indian Hills, Group 4. I mean, that's what I'm going to put. I'm probably missing somebody, but uh, I'll, I'll go with those four. I mean, I'll throw around point again. I know I'm going to say the first part of the, the 10 years. But uh, great question by uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Always Kirkpatrick. A good, always a good rank five from uh, Hey, you know what? He's, he's, he's on his game, Kenny. And that's <laughs> yes. that's that's pretty good. Uh, um, thank you to all of our Ridgewood and Northern school. Highlands have also been very good. I might throw Ridgewood in there. Uh, Ridgewood, good in almost everything. Very Coach good. Breslin's in very there. good uh, girls lacrosse team too in the spring. You know when they have those multiple good, good spring in sports. Yeah. But uh, thank you to all of our guests this e- evening. Becton football. I'm gonna throw Riverdale in there too. Jenna Kleisler and uh, Becton softball. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Best of luck to all of them. If anybody has an athlete or a program they'd like to see highlighted, please please reach out. We, we love to give the notoriety to as many programs and athletes as possible. And we got a bunch of pizza places to go to, which is awesome. <laughs> but no, I want to thank, the again, the Becton uh, football coaches. I want to thank the Becton softball girls and coach for coming on. Again, great life. 11 and 1, 6 seed as a group 1 school. That's, that's phenomenal to get that seed. So there's a lot of people in there that are um a lot of people coach this is saying emerson you know what yeah um another great program um a six seed uh, you know getting a lot of respect as a group one program to be a six seed so uh there's a lot of people at that table making those decisions that respect what becton's doing so uh good luck for that um and uh, again jenna with the uh, girls across at brick township Yep. Uh, Coach Ross is saying great show tonight. Thank you. No, thank you guys oh, for always watching, watching and yep. always commenting. And uh, again, great program, back then. Absolutely. Um, so that's it until next, next week. Next week, absolutely. We'll be working on our new guests. Um, enjoy some NBA playoffs. <laughs> Go Knicks! And uh, again, um, Mr. Briggsy, happy birthday up there. Uh, again, we'll do something for him tomorrow. Coach, uh, Coach Sis is on it tonight. He's on his game. <laughs> Park Ridge. Very good answer, Park Ridge. Another small school, but again, one of the best around also. Um, so, again, happy birthday to Briggsy. Um, K&K Sports Show tomorrow, and we will see you guys next week. Next